In the second episode of our staff role series, we are going to have a look at the beautiful world of sports science. I'll tell you a little bit about the staff role itself and of course the important attributes to look out for. And of course you will also get my top 5 recommendations for this kind of staff member to sign in your safe. Let's go! Hey guys, welcome back to the FM Scout channel. My name is Jochen, aka Leo Demus, and I am here today to tell you all I know about sports scientists. Make sure to watch this video all the way through because after that, I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section who your favorite staff member is in this role in FM22. And if you have missed a previous episode in this series, no worries, there will always be a link to the playlist down in this video description. And as always guys, if this is the kind of content you enjoy, do not forget to support us by liking the videos and by subscribing to the FM Scout channel if you have not already. Hit that little notification bell as well, it massively helps us out as creators and it's free for you. And also feel free to check out my own Leo Demas channel, the link is down in the description if you like Wonder Kid videos, experiments, live streams, all the fun stuff, you might want to check that out. So a quick recap of the concept of these videos. First up I'm going to give you a brief introduction at what that person does at the club. Then we'll have a look at the important attributes to consider when signing someone in that position. And of course later on in the video I'm going to give you these five recommendations for that specific staff role. And spoiler alert, in today's video I'm basically going to give you three hidden gems. So get those notepads out, it's gonna be worth it. Now a little disclaimer up front, when I'm doing these episodes I am using the complete FM22 database. So I have all countries and whatnot loaded, which basically means that all players and all staff available in the entire game are in my save file. So if you can't seem to find any of the staff members that I'm showing you in all of these episodes by the way, it's probably because of that. So the role of sports scientist was introduced in Football Manager 2017 so I guess you can say it's still pretty new, right? But since then the role has been given more and more importance with the introduction of the medical center and of course the inclusion of the sports science attribute. So if I go to staff and then medical team, you can see that I can have a head of sports science and also one or more sports scientists. Now as far as I know and I did some research and some testing, these two jobs are pretty much the exact same thing. It's just a different title if you will for one of your sports scientists to lead that department. But who you pick for that role doesn't really seem to have an effect on any of their performances. Now although the sports scientists are all part of the medical team as I mentioned, they are not responsible for actually healing players injuries. So rather than helping players recover from their injuries, your sports scientists will kind of try to prevent the injuries from happening in the first place. And they will do that by providing you with the information on that topic and it is your job to use that information to kind of manage or try and manage at least the fitness levels of your players throughout the entire season to minimize the number of injuries. And besides from the occasional emails you will get, there are two main ways to get to that information. The first one is the medical report which you can find on each player's profile. So for example, if I go to Karius, had to be him, right? If I go to his profile, reports, medical report, and for each player on this very screen, the head of sports science will inform you about everything related to injury or injury risk or whatever, for that player. So this is also a very important screen for example to check out if a player has recurring injuries which is really important to know. Now besides those medical reports there is of course one screen that is owned by the sports science team and that is the medical center. On this screen your head of sports science once again will inform you more on a team based level I guess about all the injuries happening at that stage. Now this is the overview tab and the tabs next to that is kind of a detailed view of the separate parts of this overview screen so feel free to check those out yourself. But what I mostly like to do in this medical center screen is at the end of the season go to season summary and just quickly evaluate this screen because I think it is really important to know if there are a lot of players at the end of the season who missed like a third of the season because of injuries and it happens all the time. It's important information because that might mean your training schedules are too heavy or whatever 
at least come here, check this out and try and draw conclusions based on this data after each season. So once again, guys, the sports scientist team provide you with useful information in those reports and in this medical center, but it is your job to actually act on the information they give you. Now, before we have a look at the one important staff attribute for this job, let me quickly tell you this. There were some questions in the comment section on the last episode on how staff members actually reach their full potential ability and what affects that growth. Now, again, as I mentioned last time, I don't have access to the game code. I don't know the developers at SI, but as far as I know from research and my own game experience, staff members will simply get better over time by doing their job. That is the key thing to know, but there are two things you can do to at least try and boost up that improvement process. First of all, if possible for the staff role they are in, have them work with colleagues that are better. So for example, put a young and unexperienced sports scientist in a team with a veteran person and you will normally see them improve slightly faster. And the second thing you can do, but this is for coaches only, is to max out the completion of their coaching badges, right? And that is basically it. They will get better by doing their job, but by doing those two things, you might speed up the process. Now back to the staff attributes, because for this episode, it's really quite simple. If I go to my head of sports science, Andreas Schlumberger, you can only see one attribute that is highlighted being sports science. And it is in fact this simple. The better this attribute is, the better the information is that you will get from them. And you can also see that there is not really a difference in this list right here between head of sports science and sports scientist. So for both of those staff roles, this is the one and only attribute you have to look out for. Sports science, get it as high as possible. That's it. But for me personally, for every staff member that I sign, I always also look at personality and the mental attributes. And I know they are not highlighted here, but newsflash, a good sports scientist is most of the time also suited as a more than decent fitness coach and that's why i've also taken these things into account when picking my top five recommendations for this staff role which i'm going to show you right now one more quick disclaimer before we dive into those recommendations is this staff attributes as player attributes may vary from safe to safe there is simply a randomness factor built into that so in other words the attributes you might see on my screen for these staff members may not 100% be the same for you guys, and it's simply because of that. That being said, let's start with the perfect person for this staff role, in my opinion at least, at the start of FM22, the GOAT. And in most of the episodes, the GOAT is going to be contracted to a club, but not today. Please welcome to the stage Roberto Sassi, Italian, 70 years old, so I wouldn't wait too long if you know what I mean. He used to be at Juventus but is now unemployed as I mentioned and he has a 4 star reputation. So I know you won't be able to sign this guy in your tier 3 club in Portugal, but he is the GOAT so I guess that's kind of normal. So for starters he is an awesome fitness coach, look at the highlighted attributes, I mean it doesn't get much better than this, guys. But of course, we are here for sports science, right? So let's click it. Skadoosh. A 20 out of 20. We are done here. So yes, I know he is really old, but if you can, and if you're looking for a decent sports scientist or head of sports science for that matter, I think we can all agree that this guy is not too bad. Let's move on. For the Wonder Kid recommendation, we are looking at staff members younger than 45 years old, a decent current ability and a massive potential ability. And for today's episode, we have landed at Nottingham Forest because Mr. Thomas Barnden is the head of sports science there. He is 34 years old and he is English. He used to be at Man City and Brighton as a fitness coach because you guessed it, he is also pretty decent at that. A not even two star reputation, so I guess that's more than okay. And for the sports science attribute, this guy already has a 15. But as I said, a massive potential ability as well. So you can sign him as a fitness coach, he will get better at this. Try it out and let us know down in the comment section. The third recommendation is the no brainer, which basically means a really high current ability at the start of the game and unemployed. So if you sign this person at your club, it will probably have an immediate impact because they are already 
really good. And for the no-brainer in today's episode, we are going down under because Andrew Nealon, he is Australian, he is 45 years old and he used to be the head physio at Liverpool. First of all, you could use him as a fitness coach, but spoiler, I wouldn't do that because his physio stats and his sports science stats are absolutely mental. Not even a two and a half star reputation, so I guess that's quite accessible if you ask me. So an absolute no brainer in my opinion. Let me know if this guy is also in your safe, if he is actually this good as well. And if you have signed him, let us know how he did at your club. Let's move on to the hidden gem. And for this hidden gem recommendation, it is all about growth. Because they will be 45 years old or younger, the current ability will also be somewhat lower, but the potential ability will be absolutely through the roof. And I just can't help myself, but I'm going to show you two guys for this recommendation. First up, Thomas Walsh. He is English. He is 33 years old. So he could in fact still be a player. And you can get him as a sports scientist, a fitness coach, or a physio. So he can pretty much do it all. Not even one and a half star reputation, which is good. And he has a nine on sports science. So as I said, his current ability is not the highest by far at the start of FM22. But the potential ability, trust me, is absolutely bonkers. So check him out in your safe. Let me know if you have signed him and how he did. For the second hidden gem recommendation, we go to Spain because Marti Matabos, I think you pronounce it like that. He is a fitness coach. He is also unemployed. He is 37 years old and he has not even a one star reputation. And that, my friends, is absolutely insane because if I look at the sports science attribute, boom, a 16. So I'm not gonna lie. This is my favorite recommendation in today's episode. He is already pretty good at the start of the game, especially as a sports scientist, but there's massive potential to fulfill still, and he has a really low reputation. So two options for the hidden gem recommendation. Let's move on to the fifth and final one, the curveball. And for today's episode, our curveball is called George Bell, but you also have a George Bell at Leeds. That's not him. The George Bell I want to show you guys is at Irish side Waterford. Oh, and by the way, the reason for our curveball recommendation will kind of depend on the episode. Sometimes we'll have a former player in there or maybe some other reason why we recommend this person. And in today's episode, I even have a couple of reasons. Because A, he's 23 years old. B, he basically has no reputation, so he's really approachable. C, as I mentioned, he can pretty much do every job known to men. And D, he has a massive potential potential ability. So pick the reason you like most, but let's just look at the sports science attribute and it's a three. But with this reputation, you can pretty much sign him with every club you manage. And all I can say is trust the process. Again, he has a massive potential ability. Sign him in either one of these roles and I guarantee you, you won't regret it. That was all I have for the sports science department. Again, guys, let me know who your favorite staff member in that role is and also if you have any more questions do not hesitate use the comment section next episode we will tackle the attacking coach staff role and as i already mentioned there is a link to the whole playlist in the video description bookmark the playlist if you have to because i don't want you to miss a single one of these videos and as always guys if this is the kind of content you like and want to see more of hit that like button and subscribe to the fm scout channel if you have not already and also don't forget to show some support on my own Leo Demos channel. The link is down in the description. All that is left for me to say is have a terrific rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.